And it's World Refugee Day, and we are continuing our interviews with Jim Estill, who is one of my personal heroes uh, in the refugee space and just one of my personal heroes in general. We thank him very much for joining us. I will introduce you, or you can introduce yourself, because I kind of didn't want to put words in your mouth and wanted to uh, say, can you tell us about yourself? Well, I, I'm, I'm Jim Estill. I'm CEO of Danby Appliances. And... Uh, I sponsored about 500 uh, refugees to come to Canada under the private sponsorship program. Um, most of them were Syrian because I started in the Syrian crisis, but I've now done them from countries like Venezuela and Eritrea and uh, Congo and many other countries as well. So that is amazing. You're at 500. Are they, are they still arriving? Uh, we've had a pause with the pandemic. So I have, we have not had anyone here for the last seven or eight months. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to start opening up, but basically everything went on pause for, for almost last year, including paperwork went on pause. Right. And uh, I don't blame the governments for that. I mean, there's lots of things they have to deal with and it's, it doesn't help. There's still a refugee crisis, but I get that this is, you know, COVID's a real thing as well. So. Yes, also frustrating. And you have also been involved in helping out hospitals with ventilators and uh, things during COVID too, yes? Oh yeah, we uh, did a little pivot. We made 10,000 uh, ventilators because at the time we thought there was gonna be a ventilator shortage and whatnot. And I was also worried for my company. I'm, I don't wanna lay people off. And I, you know, so I was worried, oh no, where people are gonna not buy enough uh, freezers and freezers and fridges as it turns out in pandemic everyone wants freezers and wine coolers and fridges so right. business has actually been quite good but i didn't uh, at the time i was worried oh no the the sky is falling i need work for people and at the same time it was a need of canada so we did the assembly on ten thousand ventilators okay got it um so let's can we just talk about why what made you decide to get involved with the private refugee sponsorship program? Uh, our, you know, our goal is to get people involved. We're a mighty fortress of three um, volunteers at our organization. So, uh, you know, I want to talk about what what inspired you, what motivated you. Well, at the time, it was a Syrian refugee crisis, and you could just see the news every night was what was happening, and it's horrific. And so I said. Well, and I didn't think people were doing things fast enough. I didn't think governments were doing things fast enough. So I said, well, what can I do? And I always look at doing something that's appropriate to the size and scale that I could do. Looked into it. Canada has a private sponsorship program, which allows a private sponsor to sponsor someone, bring them in, and they pay the cost to, to uh, look after them for the first year. There is, it's not only the cost, but there's also the settlement part of it. So you have to find them housing and get them clothing and get them, uh, um, you know, bus passes. And I mean, we ride the bus with them, set up bank accounts, uh, oh, get a doctor, jobs, yeah. get the jobs, yeah, all of it, English yeah. training, ESL, all that. So there's the doing part of it and the uh, financial part of it. And, uh, and I didn't think it was a big deal what I was doing but the world made it a big deal. And I think it's because of the doing part. I, I, I couldn't do it myself. It's not like donating uh, money to hospice. You just write the check and it's done. It, it's like, no, you have to go and organize it. We, and there were no systems. So it's, I had, uh, we, we got 800 volunteers involved to help us do the settlement. And that's in pandemic. The other problem we have with our system is our system is pretty high touch, but in pandemic, we couldn't, like I used to go every Saturday and Sunday, I would go from house to house and drink tea and talk to people yeah. and whatnot. Well, I can't do that in uh, in pandemic, but I'm 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 thinking that it's going to get better and better over the next quarter. So I'm really looking forward to opening up. So what you liked in part, I think I'm getting is the actionable um, aspect of it. So it's a problem and you see a solution and you can actually get in there hands on and do something about it, which is very unique to Canada that citizens have this power, private citizens. Uh, right. So I like that part of it. The other thing I like is I'm, we're helping people through a, through a hard time. We're not, um, I would love to solve homelessness, but if we gave every homeless person a, a house, there'd still be a lot of homeless per like, like it, it, it's, it's not a homelessness issue. It's a mental health issue. It's a drug issue and stuff like that, where this situation, 
uh, people don't understand. These are no, just normal people who, through no fault of their own, lost all of their possessions and were the difference between an immigrant and immigrant and a refugee is refugees are involuntary. They needed to uh, to move. So um, th that's uh, basically why I did it. Perfect. Um, and so you're someone who looks for ways to help. And I find that a unique quality uh, because I think what I get from you in some of the interviews that I've read with you is that you are always looking for ways to help. Can you talk about why that's important to you? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm eccentric and I have my own views, <laughs> my own views on life and whatnot. My belief is our purpose is to help as many people as we can. And how we do it, I don't care if your way of doing it is to um, run a homeless shelter in my way, like they're, they're, we all do, could do our little piece. And um, it, it does have value also to the person who, who gives. So giving builds optimism, Gi giving uh, is good for me as well. So uh, I just, that's what I do is I try to um, solve the problems of the world, but that can be overwhelming if I take on too much. So you say, oh, 500 refugees, that's a lot. It's not a lot when there's millions. And so, but you have to, to work on something on a scale that is something that uh, I can do. And sometimes when I was in the middle of that refugee project, I thought I'd taken on too much, but it, you just, of course, now, now we got through it and uh, it's all, all good. So is that something you've, is that a quality you've always had? Have you always been someone who wants to help or is it something that came on? Was there a change in your life that motivated that? So there, there was no change. I think that young people are often very altruistic and then what happens is they lose it. Um, and I, um, I've been very lucky and very fortunate in life and I've come to know myself. And the more I know myself, the more I understand what my purpose is, the more I understand my purpose, I feed my purpose. And uh, that's fulfilling. Um, in earlier life, I did spend time doing what I, what other people thought I should do. So I, 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 everyone said, oh, build, you know, grow a business and sell it for a lot of money and whatnot. And then, uh, and then buy a second home and buy a yacht and a jet and blah, blah, no, no. So I, I more or less decide, no, what is happiness for me? I, I like living a modest lifestyle. Uh, I remember I even say, I want to live a lifestyle that's comparable to what any of my employees could live if they work as hard as I do. So I, I want anyone who works for me to be able to buy the same home as I can, drive the same car. Of course, they have to work the number of years I work and, and whatnot and be as frugal as I am, blah, blah, blah. But I, I don't believe in... Um, and living at this lifestyle and everybody else have to live at this lifestyle. Um, so it's my eccentricity. So you didn't buy a jet. What's that? You didn't buy a jet. I uh, didn't buy a jet. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, has this experience changed your life or your worldview or has it had an impact on you in any quantifiable way? So I believe in my quest uh, to know myself, I've learned from the Refugee Project the secret to happiness. And the secret to happiness is being grateful for what you have, not ungrateful for what you've lost, and not ungrateful for what other people have. And that's like, if you think of why are people unhappy? They're unhappy because the neighbor has something nicer than they do. And how come someone else got the promotion and they didn't get it? It's gratitude. If you're grateful for what you have, and when you talk to some of the refugees, you really realize how fortunate, like, I, I'm not going to, this house is not going to get bombed tonight. I mean, like, it's, we are just so fortunate. I'm not going hungry tonight. I, I, you know, I'm going to sleep inside. I've got electricity. All of my problems are first world problems. It's not, um, I don't have um, the base problem. So learning the secret to happiness, that's a pretty big upside on a project like this. That is pretty awesome. Yes, I agree. <laughs> That's a great secret to happiness. Um, I'm, I'm torn between two questions here. What do you think it takes to inspire people? Because you said in an interview years ago, every day, all I can think about, or this is everything, all he can think about is from the interview is how I can bring more refugees to, refugees to Canada and how to motivate other business people to join the cause. 
right? So how do you inspire? You know, I wish I knew how to inspire people and I don't really know how to inspire people. I lead by example. So I'm hoping other people see it. Um, I mean, to, to some extent, uh, if people, people want to be happy, so they listen to the secret to happiness and see that it adds to life. So I don't know how fully to inspire. I wish I did Elizabeth, but I'm just not um, that genius. And I don't even know how I inspire the people that I do manage to inspire, but I'd love to inspire more people. So it's leading by example is the only sort of real strategy you have. I think, I think that's it. I suppose to some extent pointing out the benefits to people. Right. Um, so um, I, like I inspire uh, refugees to work because I, I have a strong belief that work is good for people. The society actually has this view, oh, you want to, isn't it great? It's Friday, you don't want to work and you know, like and whatnot. But um, I believe that work uh, cures depression. I believe work is social, work uh, it gives, provides self-esteem, work is all good. So I inspire people by explaining what's in it for them um, to some extent. Yeah, that's funny because there's this whole thing about work-life balance lately that's always in the media. And I think that it's best when your work and your life are intertwined. Right. Trying to separate the two. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, if you met one person who wanted to make a difference and didn't know where to start, what would you tell them? In any difference, it doesn't have to be in the refugee space, but I mean, somebody who just wanted to do right. something. So, so, so the real thing is to just do it, not to overthink it and to just start. I believe in business, fail off and fail fast, fail cheap. So just try something, go into an area that inspires you. So it's something that you and I, as I said, pick something that's big enough for you, not too big for you. So you would like to, uh, if you want to solve a huge issue, then take a piece that's small enough, but do something to contribute. Because I see often people overthink it and they think, oh, well, I, I can't solve the problem. Yes, but you can do something. And if you do something, it makes the world a better place and it, pa it, it passes around. Like it, it just makes it, you know, you do something nice for someone and they are more likely to do something nice, to, something nice for someone else. And it just passes around and, and it makes the world a, a better, safer, um, more real place. Yes. Very good. Um, so thank you. You inspire me. I have, we have three, we have a whole list of like funny questions that have nothing to do with this. Can I ask you a couple? Yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to do, look at this list and come up with, uh, what's, what's one thing you do really badly? Oh, I do so many things badly. I can't even list it. Um, I will say that one thing I abhor is accounting. And, uh, and, and that's strange for a business person. I certainly can read financial statements. I certainly can struggle through it, but I can do, I, I, I'm bad at that. The other thing I'm bad at is I am a bad engineer. I am an engineer. I, I train, I have a university degree in engineering, but I'm a bad engineer because I don't, do the I don't like the detail I don't like to lock myself in a room but if you want like that that question I can go on all day and I think it's healthy to know that you're not good at things yeah. I think it's healthy to know you're not perfect and the beauty of not being perfect is I can't blow this interview because you, you I already know that I'm not perfect and so you're going to go and <laughs> take a snippet and say oh look Jim Essel's not perfect yeah Jim Essel's not perfect darn right yeah that's true um What's your favorite movie? What's your favorite movie and book? Uh, good, good questions. Um, I'll start with books. I'm a marketer at heart and um, I love psychology. So um, Influence the Power of Persuasion by C.L. Dini is, uh, that's a great book. Uh, I love his, you know, it's, it has true data and whatnot. So that is a great book. Um, movies, I'm not sure one comes to mind. I don't watch very many movies. I don't actually own a television. I'm the most boring person in the world. I, I don't, uh, I, I, one doesn't come to mind as being transformational. All right, um, that's great. I, so it's as still, not as still. The emphasis as, is on- As still, yeah. yeah as still. Okay, yeah. I've been saying it is still for years. Um, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that seeing you and hearing what you have to say inspires others to do good as well. Thanks, Elizabeth. You have a great day too. Okay, take care.